Good morning, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. And this is going to be an update for the 31 Days of Witchcraft, a series of prompts that were created by Heather Carter. Her channel and a full list of the prompts is down below for you and your convenience. Um, good morning. It's a Monday. I get sleepy on Mondays. It's also raining and kind of awesome in a way. I don't know. Sometimes I really love these rainy days. And look, I remembered a jacket today for all of you who were like, Last time, last time I didn't wear a jacket. Um, and for anybody who was concerned, I literally have to walk like maybe six feet in total outside in the morning, so it's not a big deal um, if I do forget my jacket. I think I mentioned that um, in response to a comment last week, but I was just like, in case people were thinking I was actually in like a really uncomfortable position, I, re I really wasn't. I was just whiny, because that's what I do. What is happening? Anyway, my hair is having a Monday as well. So... There are three prompts I need to get caught up on because apparently filming these on the weekend is just not, not happening. <laughs> I get too distracted. There's too many things going on. And this past weekend, actually, I got really wrapped up in a few projects, one of which was grooming my dog. And the other was finishing a quilt top that I sewed up that I'm extremely proud of. Um, it's not, it's technically not finished because it needs to be wider, so there's going to be more fabric added. I'm digressing because I'm not awake yet, so welcome to the Babel Zone yet again. <laughs> uh, there are three prompts. Okay, yes. So the first prompt I haven't answered yet is about if I practice ancestor worship. Um, other people who have answered this prompt have used ancestor veneration as a word. Um, <clears throat> No, not regularly. Um, however, I did have a breakthrough. I think it was this past Samhain um, around ancestor work in general. And I did make a video about that. I believe I called it redefining ancestor work. So I'm going to link that up wherever the cards go. So you can take a look at that and have my thoughts in more detail. But in essence, what I discovered through doing some workings that Samhain was that ancestor doesn't need to be a blood relation in my personal practice. Um, that was an important breakthrough for me because I have a lot of not good stuff in my family and I have still more work to do in that, um, in that actual like biological heritage kind of stuff. Um, and it, particularly in the more recent generations, um, specifically my mother, <laughs> since I'm just skirting around that issue, um, as far as uh, ancestors who have passed. My, um, mostly good with my grandparents, and um, beyond that, I just, because I've had so much ickiness in my immediate family, it's been tricky for me to <clears throat> figure out how to navigate ancestor stuff. And so last Samhain, I really had this big breakthrough, and in essence, what I discovered is that I could connect with ancestors but I could create a very powerful filter um, or barrier, I guess you could say, where I'm only connecting with ancestors who have my um, best interest at heart. And that may be true of even those ancestors that I have difficult relationships with. In fact, um, very recently, I would say in the last few weeks, I had a moment where I wanted to allow an opportunity for specifically my mother to come through if she was in a place where she could do that in a healthy way. And I, I framed a very careful um, invitation there because I would eventually like to have healing in that area of my life in a way that um, prevent uh, doesn't prevent me from moving forward. <clears throat> and I'm in a place where having really owned my story in a lot of ways, I, I think there is a path forward for that. But it's tricky for me, for sure. And particularly when one is still navigating sort of... Um, trauma reactions in the present and um, that kind of stuff. It can be it can be tricky for sure. So ancestor work, tricky territory. I'm working on it and I'm finding my way. Um, but when I talk about like connecting to ancestors that aren't related to me, what I really mean is like a spiritual heritage in a way. Um, a long line of spiritual or witchy women, for example. And um, somebody who framed this, I think, really beautifully, or some examples of this really beautiful, beautifully, is Laura at um, Aquarius Crone. Aquarius Crone? Oh my gosh, I hope I'm getting, not getting your channel wrong. I totally might be. Um, <clears throat> and I will try to have a link to that video down below. Um, she has also been participating in the 31 Days of Witchcraft and 
had something similar to say about like divination based ancestors like Pamela Coleman, Coleman Smith and I'm not going to try to repeat what she said because she said it better but I will link you I will link you to her video because I think that's the kind of ancestor work that more resonates with me for sure what was the other prompt um if you I something about a golden nugget of wisdom for new people new to witchcraft um my biggest piece of advice for this one pair is so distracting. Does that, does that happen to anybody else? No, go away. Um, there we go. That one nugget of wisdom I would give is to not be afraid to forge your own path. And that means don't be afraid to break the rules if it makes sense to you why you're breaking them particularly. Um, but don't be afraid to learn about, okay, like maybe you're a little turned off by the structure or tradition of a particular kind of witchcraft. Don't be afraid to read about it anyway if you're curious because you might discover that there's some nuggets in there. Ha, I reused nugget. Um, there, there might be some little little nuggets of, or treasures within that practice that while the actual path itself may not be for you, there may be something that really resonates. And because I'm eclectic, that's something that's become really important in my practice. Um, and I think sometimes we throw the baby out with the bathwater. There are definitely, it's interesting because I'm, I'm starting to form a very tentative relationship with um, the idea of a guardian angel or angels. And yet that was an area that I had a huge block about because of my um, past. And so stay open, stay open-minded as much as you can. And remember that you can define and redefine things for yourself. So while maybe a family member or somebody, like in my example, a family member or somebody may have had a particular belief or approach to angels or guardian angels, that doesn't mean I can't redefine that term for myself and build my own relationship if that's something that's of interest to me. And I think that would be my biggest thing is just be careful you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater so that you can have the most beautiful, meaningful experiences. Yeah, that would be my my nugget, <clears throat> I think. I came up with it on the fly, so there may be better nuggets, but that's, that's the one I got for this morning. Uh, the third prompt, which is, I believe, today's prompt. So it been, uh-oh, I think I might be down one prompt. Well, if I am, I'll catch up with it tomorrow because I can't. Oh, I can't. Can I pause this? And mm, I don't think I can. Okay. So I'm just going to go with the third one, which is would you or do you teach the craft? Um, I love teaching in any capacity. I really, truly do. I don't know that I'm qualified to <laughs> teach the craft because my practice is all over the place. But I will say that I've been really enjoying sharing my experiences and the tips and tricks I've picked up throughout the years in my eclectic witchcraft series which I guess is a type of teaching um for sure I don't know that I would want to like one-on-one -on -one teach somebody the craft I feel like perhaps that's my own resistance to feeling like anybody can teach somebody else directly in that in a formal way I don't know I'm not sure if I'm exp if I'm forming my thoughts properly but basically because my practice is so eclectic and because I've gotten the most benefit from my practice by seeking a variety of sources of information or of inspiration and a variety of teachers in, in different forms, um, I think that's really important. It, it's something that feels foundational to me. And it's interesting because actually there's other things that I've done um, or that I've learned where I've benefited from that sort of multifaceted approach where I think it's really provided... Um, a wide landscape of learning. An example of that would be when I was in my yoga teacher training, my my first one, the foundational one, um, it was set up differently than most others in my area. And there was like the primary sort of course material taught by the primary instructor. But then he also, <clears throat> he also brought in, I just lost my voice there. He also brought in a teacher of yin yoga, a teacher of restorative yoga, a teacher of like Thai yoga massage and like yoga therapy and um, yoga for trauma and all of these different things. So we had all these modules. Um, and some people found that challenging. They would have wanted more time to focus on the, the basics. But I was actually coming at my teacher training from having already been teaching um, based on experience, like with full transparency, teaching um, classes in a community setting. So I'd already been teaching um, in a bit for a bit for a bit rather in a casual way. And so this let me sort of build on that basic stuff and actually get a wider smorgasbord is that a word of um 
a wider sampling of other things. And I went on to then get certified in yin yoga. I went on to get certified in restorative yoga. I went on to do more study in Thai yoga massage. I went on to do more anatomy and all these other things because I'd had my like appetite wet by these little bits <laughs> that I got to try. So I think that's kind of what I think about how I would have benefited from learning witchcraft is by having a chance to sample more and build more of an eclectic practice from the beginning. Um, so I would be hesitant to tell somebody that I could just teach them the craft because I feel like I'd want to teach them maybe some things, like share things that have worked for me. That's kind of what I like doing on that series. But then I'd want them to also seek out other teachers and teachers not only from like mainstream neo-pagan practice, but also, you know, learn a little bit about Buddhism, learn a little bit about um, other Abrahamic faiths that maybe you, you know, you know, if you're in, if you want, right, like literally learn a little bit from here and there, learn a little bit about angels or about um, root work or about conjure or about whatever, and then start to <clears throat> build what works for you. Now that makes me sound like I'm totally pushing eclectic witchcraft. And for some that that may not work. Some people are going to want like a very clear linear path and a very solid tradition with its own basis. But in either case, I don't feel like I would be the person to teach them all of that. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on teaching. Um, but yeah, I love teaching opportunities as they arise, just in general. I love, I love teaching. Um, I, I had intended actually, this is such babble, this is such babble. I had intended when I was in, in high school um, to become a primary school teacher. And there's a whole lot of reasons that didn't happen, but in general, I love teaching. I've, I've, I love teaching anything. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call it. I'm at almost 12 minutes. I'm going to start my day. I really got to get some coffee in me. And I hope you have a beautiful day or afternoon, wherever you might be. Uh, this coming up week, uh, Wednesday. So today's Monday when I'm filming and uploading this video. Wednesday on Eclectic Witchcraft 101, we're going to be talking about the Sabbaths. Um, It'll be a live stream. It's Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Most Wednesdays. I didn't have one this past Wednesday. Um, but most Wednesdays, well, I'll try to have that live stream. Uh, so the next one is coming up in a couple of days. I hope to see you there. Remember to check out Heather Carter's channel again. I have that linked below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about tarot and witchcraft and occasionally bits about self-worth and magic and that kind of stuff. So hang out if you want, if you like. And if you would like to book a tarot reading with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good day. Bye.